Check. We're back. What's going on? This is Flox. This is week five of OSCP, but I'm going to title this week four and week five. I apologize. Last week I didn't put out a video. I got caught up in, uh, we was doing a commercial. I have another side uh, video company, shameless plug, uh, lucidperspective.com. Um, but I was working on a, a product uh, commercial video for somebody last week, so didn't really have time to, to do the a week four. Um, so here I am now, ready to go, week five. Um, buff overflow. So I am at, I just finished uh, Windows Buff Overflow for well, well, Windows and Linux. Um, let me, let me, I had fun. It was a great, I had a great time. Um, definitely learning a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, reading about and learning about exploits like Buff Overflow, you know, either for your CEH or your CISP or what Security Plus or whatever, is very, very, very different than actually doing one, even if it's guided through the course, it is ridiculously different. So uh, before this, if you would ask me what what a buffer overflow was, or ask me to explain it or whatever, um, you know, I'd tell you, <clears throat> from my understanding before this, was, yeah, you know, it's something you, uh, you can overwrite memory in an application, in a program, in an operating system by inputting characters in a field um, you know and if they didn't have input user validation or whatever you can put into your into the input some type of code to run or whatever and you know take over the system hack whatever and that's basically the, the gist of my understanding of that um, it's not wrong but after doing the buff overflow uh, course in this lab here uh, and doing it, I, I, you know, you really, it really breaks down and teaches you step by step how to do it in the instance of the program, uh, you know, the the activity in this lab here. So um, definitely an eye opener. Uh, I'm pretty sure as as I continue on, there's going to be a lot more things that I know in theory uh, that I've studied in gen generally. Um, but d diving deep into the technicalities and the, the actual steps required um, is definitely going to open my mind up much, much more so, which is another reason why I really uh, felt the OACP was ridiculously important for my knowledge, growth, and career. Um, because, again, not to downplay the CISSP or the CAH, CEH, or Security Plus, or any of those other certs, uh, those multiple choice certs out there. Um, but they are all mainly general theory, understanding, basics. Um, unless you're doing something like doing it your own, on your own, or doing an OSCP course or something similar through Cisco or routing or switching order. Unless you're being technical and touching something and actually diving in those certs really give you a too generalized idea of what's really going on. And and this and not to rant or not, but I feel like a lot of times, even even after I got my CISP and, you know, being authorized to categorize myself as a, a security, cybersecurity professional, um, I always felt like there was still so much more that I didn't know at that point to even be, to consider myself a cybersecurity. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that get certs and you know, uh, what do they call cert junkies that just go out and take tests? And you know, I could maybe consider one of them. I feel like I probably am, but they'll just go out there and collect these certs and and call themselves a cybersecurity professional. And at the end of the day, it's like sometimes I look and I just want to ask, or I feel like, can you pop a shell <laughs> on a system? Do you know how to penetration test? Do you know how to defend? Like I feel like all that stuff is really required to call yourself a cybersecurity professional. So that's why I'm here. I'm on week five. Still learning OSCP, um, buffer overflow, ridiculously opened my eyes. Um, but then again, even the stuff that I learned is somewhat outdated, uh, because if you know, or if you don't know, the 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 examples in the book and the buffer overflow uh, activities, they're somewhat outdated. Like, uh, what was it 15 years ago? If if you knew that information 15 years ago, uh, you'd really be considered 
at the time a hacker because that the, the techniques they taught they taught or the teaching aren't necessarily relevant today because of ASLR and DEP and certain memory protection so again this 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 field is you always have to continue learning you always have to put yourself out there finding information teach yourself self teach you know school is great but you know a lot of people once they finish school and get a degree they consider themselves done you know if you get a bachelor's in something or a master's in cybersecurity now you consider yourself a cybersecurity professional but are you really you know what i mean does a piece of paper make you who you are or or does it does a piece of paper I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm getting at. Even when, even after I get this OECP, there's OSCE, there's OS, the other certs, and there's there's always avenues to learn. So I'm going to continue to keep learning. Um, let's see what else I got here. I'm. I'll be honest. I haven't been on. I haven't been spending as much time as I should have. I'm. I'm basically a little bit past or a little bit over halfway through the book. I was trying to give myself this entire month um, of September to finish the book. So it's 923 or September 23rd. I have seven. I got seven, eight days to try to get through the rest of this. I think I could do it um, if I spend a little more time throughout the days. Um, and then after that, I'm, I'm pretty much left about 20 days into the lab. So uh, I'm going to definitely have to re up and or, excuse me, uh, do some more hack the box of Bone Hub in between before, you know, I feel like re upping to get back into the OSCP, but um, yeah, so uh, this is my update uh, for this week. Uh, this is week four and five. Um, I definitely, I, you know, I apologize for not having m more information for you guys. What I do want to do is after I get past this book and, and start getting more comfortable with technicalities of things, I do want to start doing uh tutorial videos on youtube so i'll start you know releasing not releasing but performing uh tutorials on some of the tools and what i'm learning just so you know as as i as i learn and teach or talk about it it also helps me learn uh, and retain information i find so um there's one thing to just teach yourself and then hoard information and try to you know never never share to to the, to the community or whatever but i feel like um, that's probably something I want to do, you know, as I learn something extravagant, um, I'll post it on my Instagram, my Twitter. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I post a lot of links to news articles and things like that. So, uh, if you don't mind, follow my, follow my Twitter, follow my Instagram, social links are there. Uh, check out my, uh, blog site, bunnyflux.com. Uh, I update that probably regularly, maybe once a week, I'll put a new post or something up there. Um, and then I have, again, my resources page where I'll put new tools that I find, uh, resources. It's just basically a, a, a list or a page of links to different types of resources. So um, I think I'm ended on that. Uh, if you have any questions, please write in the comments. Hit the subscribe if you like. Hit the share. Hit the like. Um, and all that YouTube lingo. This is Flox. I'm out. Till next week. Thanks.